Hey, what's up? It's Jared. Today I wanted to talk about how I'm using Notion one year later. I can't believe it. It's already been just shy of a year since I started using Notion and it has changed a lot about my organization in life and with my business. Just everything all around. It has been a game changer for me. Now, if you've been watching some of my previous videos, you've seen a lot of templates that I've been putting out, a lot of things that I've been sharing on how to do specific things. But in this video we're going to talk about how I am using Notion uh, from start to finish. So if you want to see everything that I'm doing within Notion, this is the video for you. I've changed a lot about my setup. It's gone from uh, super simple to overly complex, back to simple to complex again, and then now to something that I have found that is manageable, that is sustainable for me to utilize in my day-to-day -day life. And that's why I wanted to talk about Notion here. Now, I also recently released my first Notion course, which is a course on uh, setting up an organizational structure for yourself, whether it's for you or your business. Really, the concept of that course was to teach you how to use Notion, even though it is a course on organization and setting up a platform for that. Once you have gone through that course, you will know how to use Notion and how to set up a structure for pretty much anything. So with databases, and all of that, thinking how all of that is going to work together to provide something that actually is useful and sustainable for you. That is what I teach in the course. So let's dive into my Notion setup. What you're looking at is my dashboard right now. Uh, you'll notice something as we go through Notion here and my setup. I don't get carried away with the styling and the look and the feel of everything. I do love good style and design, but style and design as being the first thing can get in the way of actually making something that's usable and sustainable. I am a very data-driven person and I also get stuck in systems that are not designed to make me faster. And so if I have to dig through Notion, if I have to click around and spend too much time entering something into Notion, it's just not going to happen. And there were some things that I was doing prior to Notion where Notion actually ended up slowing me down because of the way that I set it up. And so now I've gotten myself to a point where that is not the case anymore. Things are very quick and very easy for me to get in and out. And a big part of that is how I'm utilizing my smartphone with Notion, which I'm going to do a separate video on because uh, there's some setup and stuff in how I utilize that. But here's my dashboard. It's got a nice picture of my kids so that I can see their smiling faces. Of course, my youngest one looks worried because she's being held by her three bigger siblings. Um, but I have my inbox right here, which is where I dump all new thoughts and everything. And that is a database in and of itself. And it's a very simple database. And I talk about it in my uh, how to build a notebook video on how and why I have it as a separate database. But I have my inbox there because it's an easy place just for me to throw things. And I don't have to worry about connecting them to other databases and choosing properties and drop downs and all that stuff. It's just get it out of my head and put it into the inbox. And then I have another notebook over on the right hand side, which for me is kind of a prayer journal. Uh, down below, I have my tasks. This is tasks that are due today. So I'm looking at only stuff that I need to work on today. I have my interactions for today. It's early in the day still. I haven't had really any interactions today, so I haven't logged anything in there yet. But this is an easy place for me to get access to the interactions that I've had in the day. Uh, if you're wondering what that means, my interactions calendar video I've linked to down below. Very cool video on how to use calendars to log interactions and different things that are going on in your life. I then have open projects, which are typically client projects. And so any open project that I'm working on is going to be over there so that I can quickly access it and add information to it if I need to. Uh, maybe I recently got an email with some assets or something and I need to make sure that I have everything in that project so I can I quickly access it here. I then have my projects over on the right hand side and both of these are showing me projects by most recently updated. And so every time I go into the project it is reordering and, and giving me what's most recently updated and it's showing me 
uh, just the most recent projects that have had activity in the last 30 days. So any projects that are older, I can go directly to that database and view right here. I just wanna see stuff that is active. Because for me, if something has been sitting there for too long, maybe it's a project that is, it's not on hold, but I'm just waiting for the client to get something back, or it's one of my own projects and I've had to kind of put it on the back burner. I Looking at that project every single day slows me down mentally. I don't know why it, it just slows me down mentally. And so I only wanna look at projects on my dashboard that have recent activity that are moving forward. I then have my expense log down below, which gives me an easy spot just to throw in new expenses. Sometimes I actually just throw them in the inbox and then eventually move them into the expenses, uh, my expense log. And so recent transactions here, this is set to show me the recent transactions from the last seven days. So I haven't logged anything. I've, con I've kind of fallen behind on the last seven days here. I've got some catching up to do. I then have some pages and sections that are here, an archive section section, a uh, page that contains any public pages, and then a section for my templates and courses. And those used to always be over in the, the sidebar, but there was so much stuff in my sidebar. If you've ever looked at some of my older videos, my sidebar just had tons of stuff. And for me, that was bogging me down, having all of those things there. It was when I had to go over and click on something, I had to look and I had to look at all of them. And then maybe one of them, I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot to put something in there. And so I'd click and it, it was just, a, it just wasn't productive. And so I needed to simplify my sidebar. And so since I'm not getting into templates and courses every day, public pages and archives, I threw all of those at the bottom of my dashboard. And then of course they show up here as well. Uh, I could just twirl down and get to them or I can get to them from the bottom of the dashboard. So the next section is my calendars and I have two calendars in here. I have my content calendar and my interactions calendar. So I have my, my two databases listed over here on the left in a column, and then I have a linked database right here to my interactions showing my latest interactions. And so this is a list view with my latest interactions from the last week, and all of those are here. And I can easily add new ones here. I can easily see and access the uh, most recent ones. And then of course I can go into the interactions calendar itself and see all of those interactions. Uh, but what I like doing and what, what I like about this setup is that I don't have to go into the databases all of the time right now. If I go all the way into the database like this, I'm looking at this big bird's eye view of everything and uh, especially in a table view, you've got all this data in front of you now, and it's distracting. It makes me want to sometimes go into another item or, oh yeah, I need to add something to that. And then I'm getting myself off track. And this is what I've really had to dial myself in with in regards to Notion, is making sure that I have it set up in a way where I'm not giving myself information overload when I don't need that information. If I have all of that information coming at me and I see something, it's a distraction, I may go into it, I may add a note, something that I forgot, or it, it triggers a, a thought and, oh, I need that, I need to look at that really quick takes me off of my original plan and I need to make sure that I guard my mental energy or whatever so that I don't get distracted. So I've got my interactions calendar and then uh, my content calendar I probably need a good view for. That's another one that can be kind of a distraction because I have tons of video content for my three different YouTube channels, blog articles, email newsletters, all sorts of stuff that I'm sending out and it can be kind of a challenge to and very distracting when I'm looking at that big list of all the content that I have planned. So what I'm working on next is an, a, a nice little section like this for the content calendar. So if I go down into my CRM, this one's interesting because my CRM is where I keep my contacts, my client projects, and my client's databases. So I have three databases over here, and then I have three linked databases uh, right in the middle that show me open client projects. So open client projects that are currently being worked on, I can see right there. 
I also have my last updated clients. And so the last uh, 30 days, it's going to show me updated clients there that have received updates to that entry. And so it's cool because even if I even if I add something like add a task and then connect it to the contact or the client, it's going to update that here as well, which is really neat. So I can see clients that have gotten the most recent updates and then go into that actual client uh, and view all of the information there. And then I have my latest updated contacts down below does the same thing. Last 30 days in the order of the last updated and this updates on its own as I make changes throughout. So the clients database, uh, I haven't been in the clients database as much. I used to have a status here, a last contacted and a status. And as you can see, a lot of them have the red stop sign uh, because I just, I haven't been keeping that updated. I haven't deleted it yet because I still feel like, I, I love the fact that there is a little bit of um, like, uh, if then statements working in there and giving me an, an emoji based on is it a thumbs up am I good or is it do I need so I like that but I'm not sure if it's really useful to me right now um, because the visual doesn't really do so much for me it gives me more anxiety than anything else and so I'm, I'm currently working on trying to figure out a better way to display clients that haven't had any communication in a while. And so uh, this might not be the best way, but I, I haven't changed it yet. I haven't gotten rid of it yet. Uh, client projects here. As you can see, there are more client projects here than there were in the previous displays. That's because I have some client projects that are currently on hold. And so because these are on hold, they're not showing up in that list. They're on hold because they either ha we have to wait COVID has changed a lot of things, and so I have projects that are on hold until things loosen up with COVID. Uh, and then, you know, I, I don't want to have to look at those projects every single day and get feelings about them or think about them. I need to be focused on what's in front of me right now. So going back into the CRM, my contacts database uh, used to be uh, my personal CRM, I think is what I called it. Basically the exact same thing as my clients database with the exception that there's more of a focus on interactions and I also have uh, sections in here for email and phone number, uh, date of birth and stuff so that I can easily be reminded of important things and have an easy point of contact uh, for my different contacts. So I also have a new section called GTD for getting things done um, and I have three databases that are in there. I have my projects, tasks, and my 2020 goal tracker. Now, the tasks being in getting things done and the client projects could easily be in getting things done also in the GTD section. But I put the client projects in the CRM because I felt like the projects and the client themselves needed to be together in their own section. And the projects themselves, even though that is something that I need to be getting done, the tasks are more at the hand of actually the day-to-day -day work. So my tasks being here in the GTD section, I put my projects in here because I don't have like a, uh, Jared's CRM or whatever I uh, you know for myself so I just put my projects in here for right now it makes sense I guess to have them here because when I'm not working on tasks I'm working on my projects and so that is in here and then my 2020 goal tracker is in here as well it, it's nice because my 2020 goal tracker was kind of at the bottom of uh, of my of my sidebar, and I wasn't looking at them. And so now it's here; it's easy for me to see. And then, of course, in the center, I have my open tasks that are available that are coming up within the next week. And so, all tasks that are needing to be dealt with in the next week are right here. So it's a little bit more of a view of tasks than on my dashboard, which is only showing me today's tasks. The biggest change that I made was to my notebook section. And I talk about this in my notebooks video, so I'm not gonna go super deep into this right here. I changed the way that I was utilizing notebooks because I realized I was creating a notebook data disaster uh, down the road 
for if I needed to export my data out of Notion into something else. There are a lot of cool apps that do neat things, and I realize that Notion has its standard purposes and is not going to become the niche in any of these areas. Notion does a lot of amazing things, but there are note-taking apps that are really amazing. Notion isn't gonna get a lot of those features because Notion can't add every little feature possible. There are a lot of task management apps that have cool features that Notion probably isn't gonna get because Notion is Notion and they're being Notion. They're not trying to be just task management or just a notebook or whatever. So there are things that make Notion great all around and the collective Notion is better than maybe some of the individual things and there's some trade off there. But if I wanted to get my content out of Notion into one of these apps just to play with it, it was looking like a very problematic future for myself. So right now I have multiple notebooks and I talk more about that in my notebooks video again, but I have multiple notebooks rather than just having one giant notebook with sortable options and different views. Uh, that was kind of a, a change I didn't want to make because I liked having one database. Coming from a data background and a programming background, when I would build a database, I would build a database that can do many things. We typically weren't looking at the database, we were looking at the data that was, was being pulled from the database. But in Notion, we're kind of doing all of that. We're, kind of, we're looking at the database, we're looking at the data that is in the database as well, and so I had to think about things a little bit differently because the export options in Notion are not so robust that I can pull just little chunks of my data out based on what notebook it's in or based on what tag I, I had selected or whatever. It's not that flexible yet. Hopefully it will be soon, but right now I felt it was best just to have all of my notebooks separate. So I have a column there with all my notebooks. I have a wider column here with the inbox so I can easily go and take items from my inbox and drag them into the notebook that they belong into and then I can go finish off that note and uh, organize it or do whatever I need to do within its specific notebook. So that simplified things as well because my notebook was getting a little big and a little bit challenging to sort and I had to go through each uh, view just to see specific notebooks. And so this is a little bit easier as well, even though it goes against my database programming background from uh, my earlier years. So that is my entire Notion experience right now, my whole workflow and everything that I do in Notion. I do still have some favorites up here that are kind of quick access. It makes it easier for me to get into my content calendar, which I'm still working on. My content calendar has also become a very challenging place. It has a lot going on in it and I'm trying to decide if I need to separate things or if I need to just double down on the setup that I have and fine tune it even more. So that's an area that I'm gonna be talking about uh, a lot in the future. And of course, I get into my tasks every single day. So those are areas that I wanted quick access to even though there is quick access to them from my dashboard. So I hope that you enjoyed this uh, one year look at how I'm utilizing Notion in my life. I've definitely gone through a lot of transition and change over the year, as most people do through their process of trying to get more organized. There are some fantastic folks that I follow on uh, YouTube as well that uh, talk a lot about Notion, and all of us, as we've used Notion more, have transitioned into utilizing it in different ways and found better systems and whatnot. I use Notion just for me. I don't collaborate with anybody uh, utilizing Notion at this time, and so for me, it's a tool that I can use to be as organized and as productive as possible. If you wanna learn a little bit more about how to do that yourself and how to set up stuff like this, definitely check out my Notion course linked down below. I've got a special price for you. If you click that link, you'll get that special price right now. So definitely do that. And it helps support me and this channel here and me making videos like this. So thank you for considering. But that's gonna do it for this video. Click the like button if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel here to get more videos on Notion and productivity and stuff like that from me. Thanks so much for being here. I hope to see you back in the next one. Take care.